Alright everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at JU Linux version 10. Now when I looked at its predecessor version 9 last year, I awarded it the worst distro of the year, where it was bloated and buggy. Well happy to say they have at least taken some of my criticism there, and done a fair few improvements to the distro. For starters, it's half the size that it used to be, it's now just over 1 gig to download. So there's far less applications included, as that was one of the big issues with it. It used to have so many applications, it was just ridiculous. But have they improved it enough? Well, short answer, no. I still couldn't recommend this to everyone, because the long answer being, it feels more like someone's system. It doesn't bring anything new and amazing to the table. What we have is a distro that's based on Zubuntu 1404. So yeah, at least you've got the long-term support release. Other than having the custom backgrounds and a script there to install lots of additional applications, there's nothing really amazing about this distro. It's... Well, we'll take more of a look at it. The layout of the desktop is pretty standard. So you've got some application icons there. And on the bottom left-hand side, we've got the whisker menu. And on the bottom right-hand side, we've got the network, sound and music player controls, time and calendar. If you right click it brings up this menu and you can get to applications that way. You also get the same menu if you press the Windows or Super key. Finding the additional drivers was pretty confusing and well, this is for me an experienced user so let alone what a new user would find. So you have to go and right click, go to applications and then settings manager. So you have to go in that way because I can't see a launcher for it here in the whisker menu. Is it under all? Nope. No, there's nothing about settings there. So yeah, I have to go through here. And yet the additional drivers is there. Okay, pretty obvious. Not. So there's a few different configuration options you get here. So one of my criticisms of the distro before was that there was far too many applications pre-installed. So let's just take a look to see how well they've rectified that. So under accessories, that's about all you need. Education, okay, Bible guide. I don't think it's a good idea to include anything religious based on a Linux distro because these distros can be used internationally by people in countries who do not accept Christianity as a religion. Something to bear in mind there. So under graphics, you do get GIMP and an image viewer. Internet, you get Chromium, Midori and SeaMonkey for web browsers. Okay, you can pick one and use it. And get Thunderbird for the email. Multimedia, got one music and one video player. Office, you got the lightweight Gene American Abbey Word, as well as the full suite of OpenOffice version 4.1. And it's quite rare to see distros using OpenOffice. Going across to the task manager, you can find they've, uh, memory usage isn't too bad. I think it's pretty much what Zubuntu is. So it's about 290 meg at boot up. Right, now I'm interested in this upgrade to full version. So I want to see what this does. Does it make the distro as bloated as it was before? Because right now it's you know, kind of reasonably acceptable. So we've got a lot of applications about to be installed. So let's just take a quick glance at what it'll be. So I'm seeing a few restricted extras. Okay, we've got image magic, um, some fonts. Various library files, I've got Wine, VLC, go on, let's go for it. So this is an additional one gig of disk space will be used. <laughs> right, it seems that because I'm locked in on the United States Ubuntu server, it's going to take quite a while to download those applications, because I can get about 7 meg on the UK server, and we're not even getting 1 meg on the US server. Great. Okay, so that's got there in the end. And now we've got a few more applications that it's offering to install. Audacity, uh, some DVD programs, KDE libraries. We'll take a look at the application menu in a moment. Something else I want to play around with. Uh, I didn't see this running too well on the network. It crashed a few times in the file manager. Okay, so I do single click here. I'm remembering this time. I double click there. Go into work group. And anything? Anything at all? Let's open up another file manager. Oh, fail to open the work group. 40. 
But that's okay, it's, it's recognised the network that way. And what's going on there? Why have my folders got all messed up? Oh, got something else being asked now. Do you want to have Netflix installed on desktop? You can't just access Netflix in your browser. To use Netflix, you must do this. I don't know, I think there's ways around it now. Netflix probably sends data to Prism. Okay, we'll go for it and just see what happens. 284 meg additional disk space will be used. Crack, it's as bad as a Windows installer here. Do you wonder how much disk space has been used up on here now? Uh, oh, okay, yeah, install another thing. Free disk space, 23% of 35 gig used. Oh, I still get the GStream errors here. Oh, give over. That was a bug from ages ago. I'm starting to think it's just a complete mess with GStreamer. Right, VLC is out. Oh, right, here we go. Yep. How about some video games? What are we doing? Oh, Netflix. Oh, never used it. Press Y and have some awesome games. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So what we're we gonna have? Okay, a few different things there. Oh, I've got even more games to install now. This is getting ridiculous. I've just swapped the repositories over so it should go a bit quicker now. So I've got another four gig of disk space to use up. <laughs> Finally it's done. Right, it's taken like 50 minutes to get through that lot. Oh, admittedly I should have just changed the repositories earlier on and uh, changed the UK servers and it would have gone a lot faster. Anyway, it's done. The last question there was do I want to install VirtualBox? And no, I don't really. Let's see what we've ended up with. So on games, that is one hell of a lot now. Do you know, I would have rather seen a graphical installer where you could have just selected these sort of games from a list. That would have been much nicer than just having all or nothing, really. It just seems a bit of a crude way to do like a bash script, which is effectively all it is. And here's what I thought of JU Linux version 10. So yes, it is much improved on its previous release, and it does come with the option to, they call it upgrade to full version of JU Linux. It just means installing lots of additional applications and waste lots of time, as i found. But on the downside, it doesn't really bring enough unique features to the table. Now, to get at what I'm meaning here, this feels like it's just someone's system. Whereas you take something like elementary OS, comes with a really nice lightweight desktop and is pretty unique there. Same for like Bodhi Linux, it's a pretty unique system. And even my top rated distro, Solid K, okay, it's a KDE desktop, but their maintenance and their repositories, they've actually got a better selection of packages available in their repositories than Ubuntu comes with. And they make it really easy for the user to sort of find their way around initially, with like the drivers and finding useful information sort of when you first install the system. Whereas this, none of that. So yeah, it feels like someone's system rather than a distro for the masses. So overall, I have given it 65%. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.